I'm going to have to rant about Facebook a bit. Facebook is about is going to start rating your trustworthiness on a rating of zero to one. This is ultimately going to be used to discredit anyone who is right of Che Guevara, just exactly like the Chinese social credit system does in China. It'll be don't don't like what we what, don't agree with what we want. Well, everyone's going to think you're not very trustworthy. Better change your views or you'll drop to zero, comrade. There's no question in my mind that that's what's going to happen. If you're still using Facebook, for God's sake, get off. Their business model absolutely requires that sharing of your personal information via public APIs that any competent programmer can use. And even otherwise, it leaks like a freaking sieve. But the thing that bothers me the most and the thing that this uh, rating of uh, trustworthiness is going to really become problematic in is where I've talked before, that there are recent studies that indicate that social media is turning us into dopamine addicts. Dopamine is a chemical that occurs in the brain. And it has a number of different pathways, a number of different things it can do. But one of it is involved in what's called um, motivational co uh, component of reward-motivated uh, behavior. What happens is if you do something once and you get rewarded for it, the next time you do it, you anticipate being rewarded for it and feeling good as a result of being rewarded. And so this increases the dopamine level in your brain and causes you to feel happy in anticipation of being rewarded. Now, with social media, what you're doing is that you're anticipating being rewarded when you post with hearts, likes, shares, retweets, etc. So consequently, this dopamine is being released and stimulating the pleasure center of the brain. And because it's reward-based, the more you post, the more dopamine gets released. And this, in my opinion, is probably why people are constantly hooked to their phones and social media. They have, in fact, become hooked on dopamine. Now, if you add to this Facebook's, Facebook's new policy, where they're going to rate your trust trustworthiness, I see this as an utter recipe for disaster because people are going to want their trustworthiness to be close to one or hit one because it's going to be rated zero to one. And so this is because it's going to need to maintain that dopamine level. You're not going to feel the same kind of reward if your trustworthiness is low because you're not going to see the same kind of likes, tweets, retweets, et cetera, et cetera. All of that. Uh... Yeah, I'll talk about Zuckerman and Berg in a second there, Al, or Larry. Um, this is all, ultimately, when you put all the pieces together on this, this winds up being nothing less than an attempt to use classical conditioning that is giving you rewards for things that they like to brainwash people. Now, I'm quite certain that Zuckerberg and the people at Twitter know exactly what they're doing here. I have supported marketing wonks so many times over the years at many companies, and I am quite certain that they have meetings where they actually discuss how best to hook you on dopamine rush. And consequently, I am suggesting to everyone that they get off Facebook and Twitter before they are brainwashed via dopamine addiction. It is a recipe for disaster. Get out. And Larry Larry says, Zuck apologizes after being caught doing evil things, then continues doing the same things. And worse, and worse, this is nothing less than the worst kind of drug pushers you can imagine. These are the guys that are getting you hooked in such a way as, you, as they say, well, I'll give you another one if you give me a BJ. This is exactly what this is, only it's worse. It is brainwashing via dopamine addiction, and it is horrifying. Get off. Get off now. The other good reason to get off is just the uncivil behavior, because one of the other big factors in social media is that it encourages extremely uncivil behavior, because you don't have to worry anymore about how the other person feels. 30 years ago, if you were discussing politics over the backyard fence or while watching a game, you had to be civil. Disagreements were disagreements, not existential issues. You had to care if you lost real friends, or if you made the other guy on the other side of the fence so pissed off that he decided to belt you. Or worse, maybe you made somebody cry. That is all gone now. 
Now it is just arguing and threats, all backed by a dopamine addiction of which most people are totally unaware. You simply attack each other back and forth and things escalate and escalate until frankly you have Antifa running around. Now, personally for me, you know, I found, because I've been off Facebook for months now, I found that leaving was a very good thing indeed for my own mental health. Because after I got past the dopamine withdrawal, and there was a little, not bad, I found that my general outlook on life was much, much better. Um, I got past, uh, I wasn't in the position, frankly, of constantly feeling like I needed to defend both myself and my beliefs from constant attack. I wasn't in the position where I felt like I had this nagging thing where I just had to get on so I could tell some communists what to go do with themselves, you know. When I didn't have that, for the sake of my mental health, it was much better. Social media is frankly just toxic. It is bad for you. It is bad for society. And to be honest, I doubt if we had some of our social, uh, it, we would have some of our social ills if it weren't for Facebook and Twitter. I'm not sure the Antifa would exist were it not for Facebook and Twitter. Get out. Get out now. Now, for me personally, I come here. I come on YouTube to vent. I do it live. Anybody can disagree with me, but ultimately I have the mic. I have the cam. I have the lights. I have the green screen. Uh, it's my show. And that's uh, really all I need personally. But if you must use social media, in place of Twitter, I would at this point recommend MeWe. I have a MeWe, and there's a page there for Tales from SYL Ranch. And there are other freedom-based alternatives. Um, this was put uh, up to me by MeWe. Now, these are some more free alternatives. They do not have the same restrictions in terms of freedom of speech. They do not have some of the same restrictions in terms of what they're trying to do with dopamine and getting you addicted. To be honest, that's probably because there aren't as many people on there. Now, I have accounts for all of these, uh, every single one. I, at this point, I would certainly recommend Proton Mail. Uh, I am looking very hard at infogalactic.com as a replacement for uh, Wikipedia. Uh, uh, Aptoide is a good, uh, I don't know, I'm not sure about Aptoide yet. I haven't played with it enough. Um, uh, uh, DTube and BitChute are good alternatives for YouTube, except that uh, streaming may be a little problematic on them. The rest I have, and DuckDuckGo is a replacement for Google search, absolutely. Um, I would definitely at this time recommend DuckDuckGo, ProtonMail, and I have an account on Minds, and I have one on Streamit. I'm not yet sure about those, but I would definitely recommend MeWe. Um, there are open, there are more liberty-friendly alternatives out there and ones that are not trying to brainwash you via um, dopamine addiction. One thing to be aware of is if any of these guys ever do go up to be the size of uh, uh, Facebook or Twitter, it will be time to leave. Um, I have seen this over and over and over. I've said before on the show, while building the Internet, I have seen this over and over. When any service gets to a some kind of tip over size, and I don't know what it is, this happens. It turns into uncivility, and then now people taking advantage of how it's used to hook you on dopamine and manipulate you. So if a service ever gets too big, regardless of whether it's on that list or not, get out. It will be time to get out. 